Hey guys and gals, welcome to our off-grid homestead in the high desert of Arizona. In today's video, I'm going to give you some reasons to consider having a worm farm, show you what you need to get started, and show you how to build a cheap and easy worm bin. Let's get to it. common and well-known reason that people would have a worm farm is for the worm castings. It is considered probably one of the best natural organic fertilizers you could use for your garden and it's cheap and it's easy to produce. Worms are basically low cost, low maintenance composting machines. All you do every few days you throw a few of your kitchen scraps in there in your worm farm or your, your worm bin let them have at it and what they poop out it's garden gold you really can't get anything better any a better fertilizer to use on your garden your plants and your trees so producing your own fertilizer it's another step into becoming more self-sufficient you, you'll no longer have to rely on somebody else to to give you your fertilizer and for living off-grid if you want to be self-sufficient as possible in living off-grid then you're going to need fertilizer. That's a big part of pretty much everything you do out here. So basically now you're, you're your own fertilizing manufacturer. Here at the Country Dream and Homestead, we're not all, only striving to be more self-sufficient when it comes to feeding ourselves, but also our animals. So consider uh, some kind of food or feed shortage, a supply chain interruption, disruption, or a uh, SHTF situation. In order for you to stay alive in those situations, you got to be able to keep your animals alive. So you can produce your food, your, do your canning and stuff like that, but you also want to be able to produce food for your fam, for your livestock. So one of the steps we're taking is the worm farm. That's a supplemental food source for our quail and our chickens. So that's a step in the right direction. Now quail or worms, they can double and even triple their size the amount when they reproduce in just a few months so it's a quick turnaround where you can start saving up lots of worms have lots of different bins and have plenty of worms on the side for your for your fowl Another reason for worms, fish bait. So anybody that does any fishing using worms, you know how expensive worms could be at the store. Well, having your own worm farm, you're growing your own bait. You know, that saves you a lot of money and you're self-sufficient when it comes to fish bait. So, so far, worms, they provide food for our garden, which provides food for us. They provide food for our animals, chickens, quail, any fowl you have, which provides food for us. And they provide food for fish or any aquatic animal, which provides food for you, so for us. So they're, they're beneficial, you know, all the way around. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell you what you need to get started, and I'm gonna show you how simple it is to set up a bin. There's several ways you can do your worm bin. And the way I'm gonna do it, it's with two totes. One on the bottom and one on the top. As you can see, I, I pre-drilled the bottom of this and all around the edges and the lid. Now these on the, the lid and the edges, that's for airflow. This is gonna be for drainage for all the worm pee and all that good stuff. This tote is going to go inside this tote right here, which is, I'm not doing anything to it, except I'm putting this block in here, like so. And that's just to give space 
between the bottom of the tote and the bottom of that one. And that is set right on top like that. Next what you're going to need is your worms. And we got these from Worm Nerd. And there's several places you can get them. There's Uncle Jim's Worm Farm, which is really good. But in our situation, we don't have, we don't get any shipments out here. It's where we live. So if somebody doesn't send to a P.O. box or to an Amazon location, then we can't get it shipped. So, but these guys did. We got these from Amazon. We got 250 worms here for 38 bucks. All right, the next thing you're going to need, you're going to need some kind of organic compost or, or potting soil. That's what we got here. We got this, this Better Homes and Garden. It's natural and organic. It's a container mix. So that's what we're using our worm bin. Now you can uh, you can use leaves and cardboard and paper. There's all different ways you can do it. But how we're going to do it? We got some shredded paper here. I'm going to put that on the bottom over the holes. Spread that out. Cover the bottom. Those worms eat that paper, and I'm going to wet it down. If you have a spray bottle, that's better. We didn't have one on hand, so I just drilled a hole on top of this bottle. Wet it down. Nice and good. Just so that paper is a little moist. Good and moist. Now I'm going to pour some of the organic mix in here. Now you don't want to fill it all the way up. You want to leave room because as you're feeding your worms, they're going to be pooping and filling this bin up. And that's what you're, you want right there. That's the good fertilizer for your garden and everything else. This stuff's already moist too. Put a good layer in here, get down in here, break it up good. Get all the clumps breaking up, broken up here. Put a little more. Up. This stuff's good and there's not a lot of sticks and all that good stuff in it. It's nice and smooth and fluffy so they'll be able to breathe. Now what I'm going to do is put a little trench in here. Dig a little trench in that soil. And Michelle saved some uh, leftover veggies and stuff from dinner. Dump it in there. And then we'll eat that stuff up. Cover it up here. So by covering it up, you're, you're uh, promoting foraging. So they'll dig around and do a little foraging here and there and find their food. And you can also put food on the top. We have some it's cricket food coming that we'll also use to feed them that we can just sprinkle on the top and they'll come gobble that up at night and go back down in. So I'm going to put a little more in here, a little more potting soil, and then I'm going to put the worms in. Now this potting soil is moist, 
But I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more water in here. Because our worms have been traveling. So they might be a little dehydrated. You don't want it, you want it so it's kind of clumping up, it's sticking together. It's not going to fall apart, there's a little moisture in there. You just keep a nice consistent moisture in there, but not, you don't want it flooded in there because you can drown them. A little more. Now we're going to add the worms. Alright, got our worms, we're going to put them in. So this container, it's about a third of the way full. There they are, coming out of there. Trying to do this as gently as possible here. I don't want to. There we go. Woo, doggies! Look at that. So that's 250 worms right there. And in a couple months, they will they will double, double and triple in in size and how many I have. So after a while, I'll have to start putting them in. Uh, getting different totes and I'll just have, I could have two or three totes and have thousands of worms on hand to use like I said for the for the chickens for fishing and they're going to be creating all that good compost for me for the garden so there it is there's some good reasons to have a worm farm I appreciate y'all watching if you haven't yet subscribed please do and I'll catch you on the next one America <laughs>